Roy then muckers. Ford 8100. So, a lot of you have been asking when we're going to see the Ford again. Well, here it is. For those of you that are new to the channel, um, if you go back in the history of my videos, you'll see there's some stuff on the 8100. Um, stuff like, you know, explaining about the tractor and how the actual whole concept of the 81 came about in the first place. Uh, and also, you'll see me uh, rebuilding the seat. Now, when I did that, um, I had the seat out and all the I could see that the lower cladding kit, all the interior in the cab, was in a fairly bad way. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not restoring this tractor. This tractor I like in its old working clothes as it is. You know, the cab and all that is solid. It, it shows its age, it shows its life. I'm happy with that. I don't want to do a restoration. All I'm going to do is basically do an overhaul and service it and stuff like that, just to get it up and running so it's, you know, able to, you know, do a bit as and when I want it to. But I don't want to lose its sort of, you know, its history almost. But that cab was looking tatty. And as I said, the lower cladding kit inside was torn or missing and whatever. So I decided to bite the bullet and I got a cladding kit from Logan McMaster. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I have been putting off doing the job itself. There's two reasons for that. Um, first one is I haven't done uh, a cab trim kit in a Ford before, done other makes, not a Ford. But that didn't matter because the one thing about Logan is he's a, a, there at the end of the phone for you. You know, he's not like a company where you call them up and they, you know, they just supply them and they say, oh, I don't know, mate, it just came in a box marked cab cladding. You know, Logan fits these, he has them made for himself, so he can tell you what to do, and his advice is invaluable. Second reason is, uh, such a ball ache of a job. It's all right when you get into it, but you know, the thing is, if I want to progress further forward with this tractor, I've got to get on with it and do it, it's just bite the bullet. You know, it's like one of those things, you're stuck out at a bar or a club somewhere late at night and you need a lift home, sometimes you've got to take one for the team. The other thing we're going to do later on in the video is have a look at your comments. The last time I asked you uh, to put your comments in the old squip pit below and I said if you'd had a really bad day working on a bit of kit, nothing had gone right, you call it a day, you go indoors, sit down, kick your feet up, what is your go-to drink? Um, uh, lemon, said Alberto. That's actually strawberry. Um, and the comments we got back, my word, you are a strange lot. But we'll look at them a little later in the video. For now, <sighs> we better get on with this. Right, first thing, seat's gotta come out. So I've got four bolts to undo underneath the cab. And then we've got to try and get the seat out the back window because you struggle to get them through here. And the trouble is, I've got to lift this up now and get it out over the back here. Or standing on here and there. And it's just awkward, just like try to get it through the back here. It's just like giving birth to a fat child. She's short and skinny. But she's strong. Her first baby? Come out sideways. She didn't scream or nothing. Ah. <sighs> 
Right, so now the seat's out, let's remove those mounting bushes. Uh, we have a bit of a clean up. It's solid enough, there's a bit of surface rust. So once I've cleaned it down, what I might do is just, um, I might just go over it with like a mist coat of paint. If anything, just to, you know, stop any further, uh, you know, rusting or corrosion anywhere. But the thing's actually solid, so I'll just give it a quick clean down and then go from there. dire need of a blow job than any white man in history. Right, just give us a mist coat of primer in places where it doesn't have any. What you have to do just to seal it really. We're not going for a, um, a complete renovation or nothing like that. As I said, that's definitely not what we're after here. It's just as I said, once I've rubbed it down, just so there's nothing exposed, I've just give it a literally give it a mist coat for that old uh, primer. Um, it's going to be, you know, gl all glue on this, and then the, uh, you know, the clad and foam and everything. It's all going to be on top of this. But I mean, I may even, well, in fact, I'm going to. I'm going to have to give this a just again a misting of Ford blue, just because things like that just annoy me. Mm. I don't want a showroom piece. I don't want uh, you know something better than that left the factory. There's plenty of them around and they're lovely and they've taken hours of dedication and work and money. Um, as I said, all I want with this is just to um, tidy it up, you know, and say the old uh, cladding, you know, is starting to hang and look terrible, you know. I'll so. have to get some thinners and get rid of that overspray. That'll do my head in. Oh, why, Rat, how many times have I told you to wash up after weekly cross burning? <laughs> See, it's coming off. Right, day two, quick mist coat of the blue. As I said, it just, uh, just ties it all in. I know it's all gonna be covered, but as I said, that's just, I can't stand it. You know, stuff like this is nice and original. I like that, you'll see stuff like that. Uh, you know, same as that, it's, it's the age of it. But this will all be covered, but it just does protect it from, uh, as I said, any sort of corrosion or whatever just coming through if any moisture is trapped. Uh, that's all it does. Right, so I'm doing a dry run now with the first part, the main part. So obviously I'm going to have to come up and drill the holes through or pierce them through with uh, screwdrivers on where the seat is mounted. And I can actually cut out where the bushes drop in. Right, so you know those jobs that, you know, they start off all really good and you're really excited and then they turn into something horrible? Well, that was like that. But anyway, it's worth doing. Took the plate out and then... Uh, Got it all put back in there behind that, so the kick plate behind it will take your heel scratching it rather than it tearing on here. Right, so I'll hold this one hand. Just apply that adhesive. Just let it tack up. There we are, that's the, the first bit in. So we're going to put them holes through where the seat goes and bring that up. And uh, yeah, there we are. Right, side panel, dry run. So it's so not in yet, but so you get it down behind this. Now, if you're obviously doing a full restoration and all the controls, linkage uh, controls and everything are out, uh, it's a lot easier. But if you pull it enough, you can get, take this console top off. Yeah, just to loosen that up. It gives you enough to get down behind there. And you get it all tucked in. This little bit of trim just goes in that, sticks on that part of there. Uh, these bits go under here. And what you want to do, obviously, is that's the edge you see, which goes under this lip. So you need to make sure you've got enough up this end. You can trim off the bottom end. It doesn't matter how far up or down it is behind there. You don't see it. But here is where you'll see. So you, if you anything, you want to have it a little bit further up. So like here, I've actually got a bit of excess if you look. So uh, with that rubber and all that goes on, and then you can just tuck that behind like that. You see? 
and there you go. And then same in this corner. So, um, yeah, and then now what I can do now is I can pull that back and glue that, and uh, that's that bit in. So, here we are, muggers. Just got to do, say, the seat next, but that can wait. I mean, obviously, everywhere's closed at the moment with what's going on, but I'm going to get new cushions done and, to say, new uh, material, you know, upholstery on there. That'll all be sorted. But, I mean, that's all right for sitting on the most comfortable enough. Just looks tatty, so we'll get that sorted. But, yeah, everything else is all done. Just tidy that right up now. And, uh, yeah. So, to the comments. But before we get to the comments, I think we've got a fairly decent core of followers and viewers now, and that's great. But you'll always get one or two that slip under the net. Now in the last video, when we got the John Deere moving eventually, at first it wouldn't go anywhere. The clutch was slipping or something wasn't engaging fully, and it was just squealing like a pig. If you watch the rest of the video, like a normal person, then you'll have seen that something did free up and we were able to move it. Yet somebody commented, if you keep riding the clutch like that, you'll burn it out and have to replace it with a new one. Right, on the old pachometer, starting at zero, going right round the scale to 10 and back to zero, where do you think my concern for that clutch registers? I'll give you a tip, centre point's fairly high. So most things are gonna say, that's right, fucking zero. That thing had been stood in the hedge for God knows how long and everything was seized solid. In fact, I did a rev and dump in hope and anticipation that the whole thing would explode. So I'm not gonna be bothered about slipping the clutch. Now if you'd watched the rest of the video rather than just the first three minutes before commenting, you'll have seen that we got it moving. And we know people skim through videos to the end, but they don't just get to the first two or three minutes before stopping it huffing a bag of butane, drawing their own conclusion, and writing it in the comments. I mean, what? That's like going home to your old woman, and she's led out there on the bed naked in anticipation. You go in, and you take off your hat and your coat, and then go, actually, uh, I know what happens from here. I won't bother. It's a pity your parents didn't employ that method. I'm your sister. I'm your sister. Oh, you're my sister. Right, so in the comments <laughs> of the last video, We've had people saying that their go-to drink, some are just a cup of tea or a nice cup of coffee, some a lovely glass of cold milk straight from the milk tank. Others, iron brew, Coke, Pepsi, maybe a nice milkshake. Then we've got the wine, beer, Southern Comfort and stuff like that. And I can see all that. There was a smattering though in there of those that said they'd like to go back after a hard day and and they'd like to uh, you know drink what their good lady provided now you've got to hope that by the time you got home she's had a good shower otherwise that's going to be like going around to John West's for dinner but yeah as I said it, it gave me again another insight into you lot and uh, the types you are it's good it's good now in the old squit pit, the comment section of this video, I want to hear from you lot out there what you would choose if you'd come home, it's a nice Sunday afternoon, not much going on, you want to just sit back with your beer or your milk or <laughs> your good lady, and you want to put on a good movie. Now I aren't going to ask you for your, what's your favourite movie of all time? That's always a hard one. You've always got three, four, or five of them. But you just want to relax. You've got your, you've got your drink of choice. Your go-to drink. You've got that. You're relaxed. What movie do you want to see on the screen? In the next video, I'm going to service this. I'm going to get the oil and filter changed. Uh, do the diesel filters. We'll have the air filter and stuff like that. We'll have a bit of a grease up and a general look round. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what... Uh, See what we can find. So there we are, muckers. We'll see what happens on the next one. So look after yourselves and uh, keep polishing your pipe. Do well. <laughs>